This is the brand new Magic Miner BG02. It's a solo Bitcoin miner that looks exactly like our favorite GPUs. Yesterday, we had a chance to go ahead and unbox this, set it up, configure it, and actually test, does it reach seven terahash at the advertised 150 watts? Today, we're gonna open up the Magic Miner BG02 and see what exactly makes it tick. Before we go ahead and crack open this Bitcoin solo miner that looks exactly like our favorite graphics cards, I thought I'd report on yesterday's video talking about the performance. So we did see hash rate between 6.4 up to actually 8.12 for our Terra hash, which is actually really, really good. Advertised on the website, say 150 watts. On the back of the unit, it says 200 watts, and we got 181.5 watts at the wall and it performs exactly as to be expected so if you guys are interested huge shout out to plebsource.com for sending us over today's magic miner bg02 for today's video if you go over to their website and i'll leave a link directly down below you can go ahead and look at all the miners that they carry and you can find here is our magic miner bg02 they have it listed on their website currently right now at 450 dollars but at checkout, if you use the code the hobbyist miner, it'll actually save you a significant amount coming in at $405 and it does ship directly from the United States. Something to keep in mind. All right, let's go ahead and get this opened up. All right, so let's jump into this here. Once again, huge shout out to the team over at Pleb Source for sending us the Magic Miner BG02 for today's video and review look at this thing <laughs> it looks exactly like a graphics card i like the little cover it's got on there keep it all safe look at that does that not remind you of a nvidia founders edition like 100 percent so quick cliff notes on this if you guys didn't check out yesterday's video this is not a graphics card it looks exactly like it and I love for them pulling on our GPU heartstrings about it, but it is actually a solo Bitcoin miner coming in at seven terahash at 150 watts, which is pretty much, I was just looking, outperforms even the Nerd Q Axe, with the Nerd Q Axe is just over six. This one's coming in at seven terahash total. So it does have ethernet and also wireless. These fans on this side, we have an intake vent on this side. We also have another intake vent on this side and then everything actually exhausts out the back. Nice thing is it actually sits perfectly on any surface, which is nice because I plan to put this on the shelf directly behind me. It does take an eight pin and it does have a screen on it with all the stats of up and mining. Now it does have this PCI slot here. Um, and unfortunately though, this isn't something that you would actually go ahead and plug in. This does come off and there's like this film on here to stop it from actually like connecting with anything. Um, and I, I don't I don't know, I, it's something I wanna test in the future. Like, can you put this in a desktop computer? I mean, ideally it would work with the eight pin and then this just being slotted in, but I don't think there'd be any connectivity to anything. I think this is literally just a mount. Um, but would, I think this would be too hot. I think this would create too much heat for a desktop computer in a closed case. Uh, we did talk about an Octo Miner, putting this in an Octo Miner to get lots of airflow, and I think it would be okay. So let's go ahead and take a closer look here at this. So we have some screws around the outside, and we have also, it also almost, almost looks like heat sink screws that we normally get with a graphics card. So let's not waste too much time here. I'm gonna go ahead and get this opened up and see what we can find. So I'm gonna start with these two screws and these two screws. And uh, I do have my little iFixit kit here. And we're gonna to try to put these in spots that we don't lose them or mix up the screws here. I'm gonna do the ones in the back here as well. Oh, those actually, I need a little bit bigger. The nice thing is the iFixit kit comes with so many uh, different screw uh, heads, which is really, really nice. Works well for a lot of these small things. And actually this doesn't look, I'm saying this now, famous last words. It doesn't look like it has that many screws. I mean, I'm counting, uh, that's still not doing it. I'm counting about eight total. Um, let's see, let's go with this one here. So that's actually really, really nice that there isn't like, isn't overly complicated. 
Any of you guys ever take apart the Founders Edition? Uh, know what I'm talking about? Those things are an absolute mess to take apart. Always a nightmare for sure. It's funny, these, these screws here, the spring-loaded screws that you would normally have for your GPU heatsink are like barely in here. <laughs> They're also not very thick either. All right, so those are apart. Trying to see if anything's actually coming apart for me. Do I have any screws on this side? We have the IO screws on this side, but I'm not seeing, it's not coming apart anyway. Let's see, oh, okay. This back plate is coming off. Let's see. I don't want to break anything. Oh, there's actually two more screws. How did I miss that? Why didn't you guys tell me? How did I miss these screws right here? That's really odd. Let's get those. I always like to like lay out this little area to the right as like, this is what the GPU layout looks like. It always just helps me. Some people actually have a little piece of chalk and they'll write like on the back, like A, B, C, and then they'll write it on the side here as they're taking it off as well. Okay, there we go, much easier. All right, so our back plate comes off. Um, let's see, we have a board here. We have a heat sink here. And I think I'm gonna take off this IO plate here. Let's see what we get. Let's take this off. We'll put these on the other side, not to confuse these with anything. Cause there's, right now we're at four, five different size screws. Why can't you guys just standardize it? Make things a lot easier. And I'll probably have to take off this wireless antenna. I'll just do that to start with. Might actually have to unscrew it now that I look at it. Let's see. Yeah, can I unscrew this? Yeah, I might have to unscrew this here to get this off. There we go. Do not lose anything. And the goal is going to be can we put it back together? <laughs> Uh, maybe we'll find out. We're doing it for science, right? We're doing it for science. All right. So that's off there. Uh, something's still holding this on. Just trying to see. Hmm. I can't get yeah, nothing else. There's something definitely still holding this on there. All right. Let's take a look here at the bottom. We have a lot more screws here. Uh, we have these four screws here, which look like those are actually used for heat sink. We also have two here, and there's actually a thermal pad right here uh, that we do actually have in the middle. I don't see any other screws, and that's not coming off, so let's uh, keep up our adventure here. Uh, let's start with these down here. These two, I, my guess, is they hold some type of heat sink on the other side. And then what is underneath it here? Can we peel this back? What do we got under here? Uh, something from the chips there. Uh, let's make sure we put that back on, shall we? I don't want to rip the thermal pad either. Man, we haven't messed with thermal pads in a while. All right, get that back on there. So let's unscrew these here. I'm gonna put these aside, put them over here. You guys remembering where everything goes? Hopefully you do. Okay, I'm gonna take these screws off because I can't see anything else that comes off. I'm not seeing anything else. These look like actual heat sink screws. I wonder if those other ones are just for looks. All right. I like that it actually has like the GPU look here, like this bottom half looking like a graphics card with the heat sink there. All right. All right, oh, we got movement. Here we go, here we go. Okay, there's a ribbon cable. And there's another, oh yeah, we got everything here. Okay, so we do need to, let's slow down here. Okay, we do have to take off this ribbon cable to get it to flip up. That looks, oh, so much fun. All right, let's try a different approach. Let's go ahead. I couldn't get that ribbon cable out, but there's a fan connector on the board. So let me disconnect that real quick. Okay, that's gonna let us flip this up. All right, we're gonna be super, super gentle. Okay, so you guys can see that. All right, let's go through this a little bit here. I'll try to zoom in when I do some editing. Okay, cool. So look, here's all, all of our individual chips here. We have three, six, nine total chips on here. 
Uh, I'm not sure which ones are these. Are these the 1370s or the 1368s? I'm going to take a guess it's the 1368s, but love to get your feedback down below what you guys think they are based off of that. Uh, it's not something I can tell, but I have a very uneducated eye as to that. Outside of that, we do have like our wireless controller up here. We have our ethernet there, some capacitors through here. And this is actually, look, this is actually what we were keeping cool there. Um, this, I think I messed up this thermal pad a little. Dude, this looks, literally this heat sink is straight out of a, a GPU. Like, look at this heat sink here. Uh, man, this is what, this design is entirely like one. Let me, can I put this here to hold this on? I can, I don't want to rip the ribbon cable. And let's go ahead. Yeah, this is all, man. It's like folded. And maybe I didn't do this. Let's take a look. I have, uh, I have the right tools to do this. <laughs> let's see here. I want to peel up this heat sink without destroying it so I can fix it. So it's actually on here all the way. It's kind of cool to be messing around with heat sinks again. I'm not going to lie. All right. Almost there. Okay, we got the heat sink off. Let's reapply it and stretch it out over top of this. I don't know if I did that or if it was like that uh, the entire time from install where it was like flipped up a little bit. There we go. Okay, much better, much better. Um, so we have all of our thermal paste in here as well. That looks good. And we have our whole heat sink in here. But other than that, there's not much to it. We do also have our eight pin over here as well. Oh, look right here. Yeah, there's a little bit of ripped thermal pad right here actually on these memory modules is where that's covering right there. Uh, but it looks like we stretched that out. So we'll leave that there the way we have that designed. But yeah, I mean, I imagine, you know, uh, something I could do uh, is I could go ahead, clean this off and put on, I do have some MX4 that we could use, uh, but this actually, it's so brand new, I'm probably gonna keep it and put it back on. But if it is problematic, I'll probably take it off again and uh, go ahead and, and reapply some paste on there. But other than that, it's wild to see that like this is what is really inside of that Magic Miner BG02. It is at its basic form. It is the same shape as a graphics card. It's rocking the same thermal paste design. You got your thermal pads in there. So yeah, it makes it very easy to work on. The one thing I just don't like is this ribbon cable over here. And I really don't know what that ribbon cable, oh, that ribbon cable is for the screen. That's what that's for. It's for the display of the screen. So we don't wanna mess that up. So let's see if I can get this back together and get it mining. All right, let's see if this thing actually powers up and actually works properly after I've taken it apart. Not sure if you guys are the same way, but sometimes when I take things apart, they don't work when we power them back up. First, I did find, this is actually listed in the box as the user manual. Look at that, that's pretty, to totally the wizard miner, right? But that's cool, look at that, it's got the wizard on it with a little GPU in his hand with the fox. And then we actually open it, it's got a QR code you scan, and it's got some little information in here, very like, uh, D and D video game ask. It's actually really, really cool. And then look, it's just full of blank pages. So kudos to, uh, the team over at magic miner. This is very creative to say the least. All right. So let's get this plugged back in. If you guys saw yesterday's video, I did have to trim the power cable to get it in there perfectly, but now we're good to go. And, uh, you can actually just push the button on our power supply. Oh, okay, it powers on. The screen comes up, so that is awesome. We, we, we are in luck there. I was very concerned that I messed up like the ribbon cable or something like that. Something else also, uh, correction, you don't need an ethernet cable first uh, to set this up. Once you plug it in just like this, it actually will go ahead and actually shows on the screen an SSID to it, uh, native to it. You can connect it with your phone, configure it and get it set up. You don't need ethernet to get started. Uh, but we are up and mining, which is great. Oh, it's a little rattly when I do this. I wonder if that's my fault or if that's just the way the fans are. Yeah, it's okay now. When I turn it this way. Oh, no, we're good. Okay, it was just me. All right, so hash rate, we're up and hashing right now. We're already over six terahash, which is great. Uh, it did get a new IP address because I did put it on wireless. We're at 179 now. We took it off of ethernet, as you guys can see. 
just straight up wireless there. And uh, yeah, it's running great. And if you guys were curious at watts at the wall, uh, as we had talked about, we are at 181 watts at the wall, 181.4 actually right now. And it's still ramping up. I, I honestly would wait like a good 15 minutes to kind of get some kind of baselines for everything. But this is slick. Very curious. Um, where would you guys put this? You know, uh, where for me, I was thinking about it up on my shelf over there on the corner but it might be like the fans might be just a little too loud. You can adjust the fans in the software. I'm also thinking about putting this out in my shed. Once again, huge shout out to the team over at Pleb Source for sending us over, I want to call it the Wizard Miner, the Magic Miner BG02. Guys, I'll leave links directly down below with that discount code. Don't forget, they do ship from the United States, which is a huge win for us US miners. Let me know your thoughts and feedback on the BG02 down below. Seven terahash, about 181 watts. What do you think versus all these other solo Bitcoin miners out on the market?